that you've given us today. Speak to my vocal cords, speak to my mind, all about you, nothing about me. Speak to the words that you have me speak and say the things you have me speak. Lord, we thank you right now for everyone that's here and in in here today to receive what you have for them to receive you. Bless in the name of Jesus. We're going in blessed. We're coming out blessed. Everything is blessed. We thank you right now for healing. We thank you right now for deliverance. We thank you right now for manifestation of your power and your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. And the church said, amen. amen. So be it. You may be seated. We're going to ask you to open up your books, your Bible this morning to the book of St. Luke, chapter 9. And we gave you a little bit of this day for times and often. But we want to ask you to turn to St. Luke chapter 9. When we have found the same man. Amen. You can put some paper out. If you got a Bible, we want to ask you to write some things in the Bible. Come on the same man and have him let the Lord have his way Amen. up in here. Amen. Amen. We're going to find out a few things this morning. Are we ready? Amen. Anybody looking for a miracle? Amen. Anybody looking for healing? Anybody looking to increase their faith? Yeah. The faith comes by what? Yeah. Hearing and hearing and reading the word of God. Amen. Amen. St. Luke chapter 9, verses, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 16. Let's read with me. Amen. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. See, he said he gave his 12 disciples what? He gave them power and authority over what? All demons, not just some demons, and what? To cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Everybody see that? How many disciples do you have in the house today? Disciples, just as teachers of God, reading and hearing the word of God. So he gave us power to do what? Authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And sent them to preach the kingdom of God to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staffs, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two minutes at peace. Whatever house you enter, stay there from there and depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of the city, shake off every dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Everybody see that? Preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tirit heard of all that was done by him and said, and he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Herod said, John, I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? So he sought to seek him. And the apostles, when they returned, to him, they all had done, returned to him, and all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a desert place, belonging to the city called Bethesda. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him, and he received and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. So when you come to the house of the Lord, we have people here that are disciples preaching and teaching the word of God. So if you're sick and you need the healing, you can come to the altars and men and women of God will lay hands on you and you will be what? Healed amen. by faith. Can we say amen? amen? There's nothing too hard for God to do. God has given us power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So now when you're at home and you're sick and it's Saturday, you don't feel good, but you went out to work anyway, and you still didn't feel good on Sunday, so I'm just going to stay home. Now, what sense is that? Yeah. I'm going to stay home because I'm not feeling good today. And the Word of God says, if any sick among you, what? Let them call with the elders come to the house of God and let them pray for us so they can be what? Healed. Can we say amen? amen. When somebody lay hands on you, it's better than ibuprofen, it's better than Tylenol, it's better than, you know, whatever alpha sauce or whatever you're going through, can we say amen? Because when you take these different types of drugs, it may and it may not work. Can we say amen? Everybody can't take Tylenol. Everybody can't take what's the other one? Ibuprofen. Everybody can't take this. Can we say amen? So it's a hit and miss. Can we say amen? But you know, there's nothing wrong with drugs because a temporary situation it, it'll work. Can we say amen? 
But if you're really down and out, you really need some something to, to, to get out of you, come to the church and get healed. Because sometimes when you get a headache, I mean, it's not just a headache. Amen. It's a demon attack. All right. So that ibuprofen, the Tylenol, alcohol, something, whatever, that oh, old ain't going to get it down. Can we say amen? amen? You need to be cast out. So no, take no chances. If you don't feel well, come to the house of the Lord and get your healing. Can we say amen? amen. Isn't that good? Won't he do it? Yes. He said they went in all the parts of the, of the world, casting out demons, laying hands on six, and, and they were cured. He empowered them to do this. Can we say that? Amen. We are the disciples of Christ. We are the disciplines of one. So we, the same thing they did, we can do also. Laying on hands, we take nothing upon ourselves, but it's all about Jesus. So look at your name and say, Name is all about Jesus. You know, it's the same hands as everybody else's hand. But you know, it's a point of contact when you lay hands on somebody. They shall receive the power of God and they shall be healed. Amen? Amen. Do we have any witnesses in the house? Yeah. Only do it. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we have more than two or three witnesses, so we know it can be done. Amen. Yes. The verse 12 says that when the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send them all to the way, that they may go into the surrounding towns and countries and lines and get provisions, for we are in a desert place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, we have, no, we have no more than five loaves, two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. Now, they said they didn't have money to buy it. They didn't say they had a place to go buy it, too. Can we say that? Look at your name. They, they had money. Jesus and disciples were not poor. They had money. Can we say amen? They had money to feed more than 15,000 people. And said, you know, we in a desert place. There's no Kroger's, there's no Giant Eater, there's no Walmart. This is within two miles or one mile. He said, what are we going to do? Just send them home so they can go to their places. Can we say amen? So now this is where we get a title of our lesson today. And it's called Life is a Process. Somebody say, Life is a Process. Life is a Process. And there's four steps in this process. Can we say amen? Now we gave you an example right here in verse number 16. This is where we'll get the title from. Then they did so and he made them all sit down. Then he took. Somebody say took. took. First process, step number one, God takes us. He takes us out of darkness and brings us into his marvelous light. Can we say that? Process number one, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he takes you out of your way of doing things. You're normal because we was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So now he changed our way of doing things. So he's taken us out of that darkness because if we, if we died, if we would go to hell in that darkness, sin stays that we're in. Amen? So now God is allowing us that we give ourselves to the Lord. So he's taking us out of darkness and bringing us into his marvelous light. Can we say amen? Somebody say out of darkness. So in order to take us out of the darkness, he has to have a plan of salvation so we won't go back into darkness. Can we say amen? Yeah. Step number one is what? He takes us. Everybody see that? Right. Someone say, he took me. Can we say amen? Did he take you? Yeah. Raise your hand if he took you. Yeah. Amen. Step number two is he took the five loaves and two fish and he looked into heaven and he blessed. Somebody say blessed. blessed. He blessed us. You know, do you remember the day when you first received salvation? You received, you know, so Lord, I turn my life, I receive you, Lord, as my Savior. And Lord, remember that day, day of confession. I renounce sin. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in association with the devil. I Lord, I turn my life around in you. So God said, you look blessed. And somebody said, blessed. So now he blesses us with a renewal of the mind, a new way of thinking, faith filled words. He blesses us. Now, can you remember when you first got saved and everything was going so good? You was walking on, like my wife said, her aunt Denise said, walking on sunshine. Everything was going so good and happy. You tell yeah. everybody about Jesus. You was witnessing and telling them everything. Can we say that? Yeah. Everything was just so good. He said, the confidence of this person has changed. It's just like they got lighter or something different about it. You just run around telling everybody about Jesus. Can we say amen? And you were just blessed and happy. Yeah. The Lord was blessing you. Can we say amen? Then he blessed you, and some of some got refilled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gave us a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. He gave you power to do things, and you're just happy. Can we say amen? Going around just telling everybody 
Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's bless you. Can we say amen? I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Whatever my hands how to do shall prosper and have your success. He took me out of darkness and brought me into the light. Can we say amen? amen. It's good, amen. amen. So we going around, you know, you know what is a thing gifts? So let's just come out here. He gave, brought you out of darkness and brought you into life. You're blessed to be a blessing. Here's a blessing for you. So when you're in the dark places, we give you a light. All right. Amen. So, when you he says, try me. He says, try me. Right. Somebody say, try Jesus. Try Jesus. So, push the ball. Look at that. Right. Out of the darkness to light. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need the light. Sometimes you lose your way and you lose your light. Can we say amen? All I gotta do is just ask. And he'll give you a light and show you the way to go. Can we say amen? Because when you're in darkness, you can't see things. And when you have that light, can we say amen? The darkness comes, you're in a dark place and you turn the light and what happened in the darkness? It just goes. It's gone. Where did it go? It's just out of here. Can we say amen? That's the same thing when you get in the presence of demons and you got the light inside of you. Yeah. They be quiet. They don't want you to know that they're there because they don't want to leave. Can we say amen? Yeah. But you walk in the light. Yeah. And you got the power. Can we say amen? Yeah. Somebody say I got the power. Somebody say I got the power. All right. Let, yeah. First, let's turn to St. John chapter 14, verses 15. When you found that, say amen. St. John. Chapter what? 14. Verse what? 15 through 20. It's the end verse. When you have found it, say amen. It says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father. And the Father will, and he will give you another helper. Somebody say helper. That, that may abide with you forever. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth the world cannot receive because it neither, neither sees him or nor, nor, nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and he will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live in you will live also. And at that day you will know that I am the Father. Right? I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Can we say amen? amen? So now he said he will not leave us orphans. He will never leave us alone but he will be with us to the end. Can we say amen? amen. And it says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he said we're blessed to be a blessing. So now you remember the day you got saved. And that week, that month, that year, you were just full of joy, happiness. He was blessed to be a blessing. Can we say amen? He was telling people about the goodness of Jesus. You tell them about the gospel. Can we say amen? You was telling them that Jesus can heal you. Because this is what Jesus told the disciples to do. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. How many is ready to receive a blessing from the Lord? Hallelujah. Right, come on. You ready to see that? Let's come on up here. You ready to receive a blessing from the Lord? Let's come on up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Ten people, that's all one. Ten people. Ten people. How many I got?
They was broken, can we say amen? Jesus got broke, can we say amen? They talked about him, they spiced him, they spit on him, they spiced him. Everything he did, they had something bad to say about him, can we say amen? Got to the point they wanted to crucify, they wanted to crucify him, they did, can we say amen? But that was all in the plan. But it says, during that breaking process, all this impurities that's in you, all this negativity that's yeah. in you, is going to come out yeah. of you. Yeah. And sometimes you get broke by the closest people that's around you. Your job, your family, yeah. your friends, can we say that? Yeah. They just can't understand. How many was glad when you got saved? All your friends were glad when you got saved. Yeah. All your family were glad when you got saved. Yeah. They talked about you, can we say no? You holy than now, just waiting for you to come back, call your names. Who do you think you are? Can we say no? And the biggest testimony is not what you said, but what you did. Because you said, we're going to wait and see what they do. We're going to wait on them. Oh, he ain't gonna last. I remember all that stuff he used to do. There's a hell racer out there, can we say no? Oh, he ain't gonna stay. He's acting. He's out there. It's a game with him, can we say no? And over a period of time, they saw the real person. They said, oh, man, did change. He is doing something different. He's just, you know, he's walking and talking and saying the same thing. Can we say amen? That gives them an invitation to get saved. Because you got saved. The biggest witness that you have is not what you say, but it's what you do. The life that you did before us. People say, I can hear what you're saying, but I'm seeing what you're doing. Don't say, don't do what people say. Don't do as I, don't do as I do, but do as I say. Can we say amen? But the biggest way to do is doing what you say and do. Yeah. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm watching what you're doing. Can we say amen? Yeah. You can tell a what? A tree by the fruit that it bears. Yeah. You keep calling me an apple and I'm producing pears, and I'm not an apple tree. I'm a pear yeah. tree. Can we say amen? So your words are powerful. Yeah. Speak uh, speak in line with the word of God and say the things that God is saying about you. Can we say amen? Yeah. Because you will get broke. He will break you. To make you better than you was before. Can we say amen? You know, you get a potter on the potter's wheel and you're spinning and spinning it and it keeps you thinking that the vase is coming together and he looks at it and sees a little deformity in it. What does he do? He smashes it down to start over again. He don't destroy you throw you away, but he'll smash you down and start building you back up again. Can we say amen? Something's in you that wasn't supposed to be in you, so I gotta get up, get, get out of you. Can we say amen? So it's a good thing to be in that breaking process because you know that God has something in store for you yeah. because he's taking you to another level. Yeah. And when you come to another level, you have to be armed and dangerous. You got to be ready because a new level, a new yeah. level. Yeah. You've, been working, you've been working with these foot soldiers. Yeah. Now you get ready to go save for a little while now. Now you get ready to go into the general's camp. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the general's camp, there's a bigger demons. Can we yeah. say amen? Yeah. More powerful than those little foot soldiers. Strategies because you know David's been around for how many years? More than we can count. Amen. We've only been on this earth for a few years. Can we say amen? amen. But the only thing they scared of, they they ain't scared of you. They scared what's inside of you. Amen. 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 Because when you speak your words, it's nothing to them. Can we say amen? amen. But when you speak God's word, God said He will what? Watch over His word. Can we say amen? And the power and authority that He gave the disciples to go out and cast out demons. Yes, Lord. He said, "I same power I gave them. I'm giving to you." Can we say amen? Yes, All right, let's turn to Saint John again, yeah. chapter fourteen, verse okay. twelve and fourteen. Okay. When you finally say amen, amen, most assuredly I say to you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do because I go to my Father. Everybody see that? Yeah. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may glorify in the Son. If you ask anything, somebody say anything. Yeah. If you ask anything in my name, whose name? Yeah. Jesus' name. I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And he may abide with you forever. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? Now let's emphasize on verse 14 again. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you will keep my commandments. What's my commandments? My commandments is that you love one another as I have loved you. 
is for greater loveliness and love for one another. Can we say amen? Yeah. Love your neighbors. I love you. Who is your neighbor? Everybody that you come in contact with. Love is the greatest weapon on the world. Is love. Love will overcome a multitude of sins. Love will overcome hatred. Love will overcome the things that people want to mistreat you and talk about you, do things about you. But if you love them out of that situation, because God has loved you out of sin and sickness, can we say amen? Somebody say love. Now, God says, if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. Now, in the last week, I asked you to bring in your declaration and to declare the things that you believe in for. God said, if you just ask me, I'll do it. The thing Lord. is, is getting you to ask me to yeah. do it. God said, no shame on my name. Yeah. All you got to do, I have everything and you have nothing. Yeah. But you can have everything I have if you just ask me. I'm a supplier of all your needs. Everything you want, everything you desire, the needs before you need it, the things you want before you even know you want it, I have it. I got your back. Can we say amen? amen. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Amen. Absolutely nothing. Can we say amen? amen? He said, I give you a power on earth to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I give you power to cast out the demons in Jesus' name. Amen. Command them to go back to the dry place yes. and bound in the chain. Lord. Don't come back. No look back. Don't talk amen. back. Can we say, shut up and leave? Can we say amen? amen. Power and authority, can we say yes, amen? Amen. Is that being demonstrated today? Yes, it is, because you're not using your words, you're using God's words. Can we say amen? I heard a testimony of this week about Mr. Marvin talking to a, a person over the phone, asking them if they want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and they said yes. And then he started praying for them, started casting out the devils. Can we say amen? amen? Is it real? Yes, it's real. Amen. Nothing about us, but it's all about him. God's word. God wants to heal you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. Can we say amen? We have to be about God's business, doing the work of the Lord, telling somebody about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Living in the last days. Days is winding down quick, but we got to tell somebody it's an emergency. We need help. Jesus is on the scene. Get ready, get ready because he's coming back. You don't have to go through these things. Can we say amen? Jesus said, I didn't die before you to go through these things, but I'm going to break you and make you a better person. Do we fall sometimes? Yes, we do. And God said, when you fall, I'm going to break you up again. Yeah. Go through that process because yeah. whatever that caused you to fall, I will make sure it doesn't fall, make you fall again yeah. if you just let me. Yeah. The key is if you just let him. Can we say amen? Yeah. And when God doesn't force you to do anything, he created yeah. you to be a free moral agent. Yeah. You have the right to choose and decide. So you can't use the excuse that the devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do it. He gave you a thought. He gave you an idea. You had to act upon it. Can we say amen? All these, all these different ideas and all these thoughts come about. You have to choose to accept it or not. Just like Mission Impossible. Do you choose to accept this mission? Can we say amen? The devil's putting it out there to you. Do you choose it? You say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Get away from me. Great as he is a meeting, he is a world. Depart from me right now. If you give them the word of God, what do they have to do? They got to leave. Because what? He gave you power and authority. You don't know who you are, do you? Look at your name. Say, name. You don't know who you are. You're powerful. You have authority. And you have the word of God. Anything that you stand in need of, God's got it. He's just waiting for it to come out of your mouth. Give a voice to the word of God. Can we say amen? Then the first, the last part of the process is that he gives us. Gives us what? Gives us back to the world as a new person. Witness a testimony. Tell the devil's a liar. Can we say amen? He made you brand new. He made you a duo for a makeover. No, he didn't make me a makeover. He made me a new person. Can we say amen? He said, now I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. The old man is dead. He said, dead. Yeah. Now, we're not trying to rise nobody up from the dead, can we say, man? So the old man is dead. The old nature, the old sin nature, the old way of doing things, the old way of talking. I said, now he's dead. You're blessed to be a blessing. So now he presents you into the world as a new person. They said, well, you know, brother so-and-so, I remember back in 1981. You was out here with me. You was doing that, doing that. Yes, I remember. But you know what? That person's dead. He died in 1981. He's dead. And I ain't bringing him back up. Can we say amen? So you got to remind the devil because the devil will play tricks on your mind and remind you what you did. Or 10 years ago, two weeks ago, yesterday, last night. God said, all you got to do is just repent. 
and ask me to forgive you, now I would come and say, yeah. The devil always reminds you of your mistakes, your faults, your things that you have done. But God said, not so. God said, I won't remember the far east from the west. The two will never come together. So, never come together. The battles in the mind. Can we say amen? The devil is speaking to something. All right, now, won't you remember this? You did this, and you said that, and this. He said, get away from me. He said, go in Jesus' name. God has given me a power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And by no means anything shall hurt me. Walk in your power. Walk in your authority. Walk in the name of Jesus. You're blessed to be a blessing. You're the light of the world. Can we say amen? You can dig it to gas and shine the light. The light up there. Try to shine that light. I am the light of the world. There is no darkness in me. I'm out. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Welcome. New birth is here. I'm the light of the world. When I come, darkness got to go. Amen. Amen. But you got you to use that light. Can we say? And every time you use that light, it gets a little dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So what you got to do with it? Recharge it. Plug it up into the power source. Can we say amen? Hook it up to the Holy Ghost. You, know, you can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't taste it. You can't smell it. Can we say amen? But you know it's here. The presence of the Lord is here. Can we say amen? You can feel it in your shining eye. In your spirit. Can we say amen? You can't see it in the natural. You can't see the Holy Ghost in here. Can we say amen? You can't see Jesus walking through that door. Can we say amen? But we know it's here. The presence of the Lord is here. Yeah. I can feel it. Amen. Can we say, I can feel it. Am I what? Hallelujah. My shining eye. It's your shining eye. Whatever it is you can feel it. Your shining eye. Hallelujah. I can feel it. Can we say amen? So you know we got electricity in this building. If you plug it into that outlet right there, the fan will come on. But you don't know where electricity is coming from, right? But you know if you plug it up, then something will come out. Can we say amen? If you know if you charge up this microphone, when they go back, you can put new batteries and charge the batteries up, you got the energy source going up again. If you, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Can we say amen? Because if you just lay there, after a while, the batteries will go away. They go back on you. Can we say amen? Sometimes corrosion take care because you never used it. Then you got to start all over again. That process all over again. That breaking process. Clean out the corrosion inside of you. Can we say amen? You haven't witnessed nobody in 10 years. Fresh start. Come on, tell, tell somebody. We just keep it real. Can we say amen? But God said, I, I, I brought you into this world to be a witness to me. Can we say amen? Remember, he took, he took his disciples and he sent them out. And he did, he took another step and he sent them out. He said, go out into the world, preach the gospel, cast out devils, tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. And they all came back and were amazed. Lord, good report. Devils are being cast out. People are getting saved. Amen. President Davis, he said, that's all good. But the best is not just the power of authority you have on earth, but it's your name written in heaven. Thank you, Lord. It's your name written in heaven. Can we say amen? Because you can have these gifts and talents about remit, repentance, can we say amen? If you leave God, these gifts and talents will still operate in you. He says, depart from me, you work of iniquity, because I never knew you. Your heart was far from me. You was doing it for fame and fortune. You was doing it for the people. You weren't doing it for me. Can we say amen? That's why we say you have fake prophets among us, false prophets. They can still lay hands on the sick and they still be healed. Can we say amen? They can still perform miracles. But if you watch them, you can see the fruit that's inside of them. They just remember, they just are dazzling you with the anointing that has. And God says anointing about repentance. If he gave you the anointing, he's not going to take it away from you. Can we say amen? But you got to operate it in the gift of free from the opinions of people and let God use you for his own purpose. Can we say amen? You can't be caught up and head minded about what you can do. Now it's not what God can do, it's what you can do. I'm doing this. I'm laying hands on the sick. I'm casting out devil. I'm healing people. It's not you, it's God right. in you. Hallelujah. Can we say that? That's how people get lost. 
That's how that people get caught up in false religion and false teaching because they started off good, but the devil got a hold of them because they didn't, they didn't guard their heart. Can we say amen? amen? Because in that process, they might have skipped the step. But God said, I'm going to process you out of it. And God doesn't force anybody to do anything. He's a gentleman. He'll tell you once, twice, three times, whatever I can tell you. It's up to you to decide what you want to do with that. Can we say amen? amen. But if you do, if you go through the process, it says the best is yet to come. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And now in this life that we're living in, the process that we're going through, we get to the stage that we can ask God of anything in his name, and he'll do it for us. There's no reason to have nothing from God because God said, if you just ask me, I'll do it. Amen. amen. The devil can't shame you out of your blessing. Can we say amen? amen. You, the me I see, the me I be. How do you see yourself? What do you see yourself doing? What is your vision? What is your plan? You. How can I come out of this situation? But if God, I can do all things through Christ. God said, if you take care of my business first, I'll take care of your business. Amen. Go out and do the work of the ministry. Can we say amen? There's nothing too hard. He said, don't, don't worry about if I send you out to do something. Don't worry about don't try to gather up these clothes. Don't try to gather up this money, this food. Just go. Because I'll make provisions for you. Amen. Amen. Don't take nothing. Just, just go. Yeah. Somebody said, just go. Just go. I got you. Yeah. You, you don't need nothing. I got, every, I got somebody that needs some stuff for you. Can we say amen? amen. You, need, you need a house? I got a house for you. Yeah. I got you. Just go. Just do it. Can we say amen? amen. Now, you over here. You got a hundred million dollars in the bank. And he said, Lord, I don't know where my next bill will come from. Yeah. And God said, it's, it's over here. Right? Who's asking me? You, you, you got it. Do I? Yeah. How, how, how's it going to happen? Don't know until you ask. Him. He said, Amen. And he said, just wait on it. When they was out there in a desert place, 15,000 people, they didn't know how they was going to feed them. And the disciples said, Lord, this is time to go home early because it's getting late. They're hungry for the word of God. That's why they followed Jesus out there. They wanted to hear more of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. They had a hunger and thirst for the gospel. But the natural, they needed to be hungry. And it says, what are we going to do? And Jesus said, what we got to work with? All right. Right? What you got to work with? If it doesn't meet the need, it must be a seed. What are we going to do? We're going to sell this seed and work it out. Can we say amen? amen. During the breaking process, when we first got saved, I had got laid off. Working on a job. It was a devastating period of my life because I never got laid off before. So now you get laid off. You had to go to the unemployment office and wait for unemployment stuff. You had to stand this back in the day. You had to go to the office and wait in a long line in the wintertime. And the line is around the block. Yeah. Not the yeah. He was waiting in line and come tell you about you got enough information. Come back again tomorrow. What? Huh? And he said, you come back again so you make too much money. You can't get this. What? They said, well, you know, you can go and apply for government cheese and food stamps. He said, what? Uh, you can go over here. So now you, your, your pride is being attacked. Yeah. Right? You got a breaking process, you know, mentality. So, you know, I ain't too, what's it, I ain't too proud to beg, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, they break it down. You go get that government cheese and make them grow cheese sandwiches, cheese and eggs and everything else. So it's good. That was some good cheese. Good cheese. Good cheese. Good man. Now, now the, the, the rent is due. Car note due. Gas and electric due. Not enough money, not employment. They're supposed to come. They haven't came yet. What you going to do? God said, I got some people out there just ask to just stand and believe me. Gas never ran out. Amen. Didn't have money for gas, but I was still going to church. Amen. I went on Thursdays and Sundays and Sunday night. Gas still stayed in the car. Can we say amen? amen. Looked in your pockets and found money in your pockets. Can we say amen? amen? God is still on the throne. Can we say amen? amen. Somebody broke your car, stole your cassette tapes with gospel stuff on it. Said, Lord, they can be blessed by the gospel tapes. Can we say amen? amen. But the devil didn't forget it. Bad, God took it for good. Somebody don't get blessed by the gospel tapes. They didn't know what they was taking, did they? Can we say amen? You know, then later on, that was a process you went through early in your life. You know, then later on, 10 years, 20 years later, go through the process again. 
get laid off and you're going to a church and you're working in the food pantry, can okay, I say amen? And you used to get having people come in and pray for me, give them food, and then say, then to the, your parents say, well, go ask them to the church that you go to, you know, they got plenty of money. Go ask them for some money. You know, y'all want to need, y'all want a family need, they can help you out. And they say, no, we can give you some food, though. Go over to the food pantry and we can give you some food. But that's playing with your mind, too, because that's that pride. I'm working in the food pantry. Now you're going to send me to the food pantry to get some food. Can we say amen? But God says, you know, He said, they are not your source. I'm your source. Ask of me, can we say amen? And I will meet your need for you. People get mad when you get people telling you no. They said, no. He said, God said, look at the wrong person because those are not your source. I'm your source. Can we say amen? And then I got to, you know, I was working in the in the, in the union as a union electrician. And you know, where his work is good, he work. If not, no work, no pay. Can we say amen? So then the city job came up. And the city job was like $12 less than I was making before. But I saw the benefits in the future. Not looking at the now situation, but looking at down the line. Because if you work for the city and the government, if you didn't go to work, you still can get paid. Because you have benefits. Can we say amen? It was, it was a $12 cut, but you still have benefits. Can we say amen? So you look at the future. So, you know, well, I was still doing the same thing I was doing when I was working in the union for the city, making less money and still having the same amount. Can we say amen? Amen. Want to do it? Want to do it? Can we say amen? Then somebody said, after a while, God has you in a situation for a reason. But when you're in that situation, you can't see it at first, can we say amen? So after a while, the salary went up. All right. Can we say amen? amen? So now the salary is more than I'll be working in the union. Can All we right. say amen? amen? Not counting the 15 paid holidays. Right. Not counting your sick leave. Can we say amen? Your personal birthday. Can we say amen? Right. And the five weeks of vacation. Can we say amen? Because when you're working in the, back in the union, if you don't work, you don't get paid. You don't get no paid vacations. You don't get no sick time. You don't get no time off. Can we say amen? And the, and the, and the money changes. It flipped on us. Can we say amen? Then the people I told back then, I said, y'all need to apply for this to get your license. Come be an inspector. Oh, man, I just man, I can't see it. Then years later, I so, said, oh, man, I wish you listen to you. I want to listen to you. Because they've been up unemployed all for a while. Had to go out of town and go to work. Do different things like that. But God said, Never miss the beat. Listen to the voice of God. Trust me in Him and not in people. Trust me in God and not in your paycheck. Trust in the Lord. He'll make a little, make it good to be more. Can we say amen? Take a little bit, He'll make it much more. Can we say amen? Won't He do it? Yes, He will. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, life is a process. And until you leave this earth, you still going to be processed. What process are you in right now? Are you in the taking process? Are you in the blessing process? Are you in the uh, giving process? What process are you in right now? Give to give to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Gives you back, can we say amen? Are you in the process where you give them? Breaking. Complaining about things at the job, complaining about things at the grocery store, everybody's mad but you. Everybody got a problem. Can we say amen? It's a breaking process. What is he telling you? What is he trying to do to you? He said, Lord, I surrender. Somebody said, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. You know better than I do. Yeah. Break me, make me, mold me to the person you want me to be. I surrender. Amen. Quit fighting it and go through the process. Amen. Amen. Quit fight and go through the process. Amen. Break me. Because when I come out, I'm even better than I'm in. Yeah. Because after the breaking process, He gives you. Amen. 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 He blesses you. Yeah. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand, praise. Yeah. For the teaching of His word. Life is a process. And let God process you. And not the world. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 The Lord on the hand, praise.
I'm the light of the world. I process every day. I thank God. Now, if you don't remember anything else, God says, you have not because you ask not. We read in the scripture that says, you can ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Everybody got that? You can ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Then you have to wait for the process for seed time and harvest. It's a process of waiting. You got to have a blessed mentality to be patient to wait on it. How long do I have to wait on? Long enough until the job gets done. Can we say that? Long enough to the process is finished. God said, "You're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you." You making this process? It could have been a it could have been a three week process. You turn it into a three month process. Who did that? You did that. You turned it because your will is not His will, yes. and you're bumping heads. I said, "Okay, you want to wait? Wait, wait, do it your way. He let you go." He said, oh, "Lord, I made a mistake. How many did that before?" You know you shouldn't have did it. And God was saying something else. And you went ahead and did it anyway. Huh? What happens? If you don't pass the test, you gotta start on it again. The thing you learn is, well, I won't do that again. Once you find out how the thief came in, you're gonna block that door. If you came through the door, you're gonna make sure the door's secure. If you came through the window, you're gonna make sure the window's secure. Can you say that? That way you ain't coming in that way no more because I know that, right? Amen. Amen. Somebody say it's a process. But it's all good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to stand. If anybody need healing, the altar is open. If anybody need someone to pray with them, the altar is open. If anybody needs to stand and agree to the things they're looking or asking God for, the altar is open. Say, so lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come to the elders of the church and let them pray for you. Let them lay hands on you. Deliverance is in the 